My recent print kind of failed because of a problem that many users have with this 3D printer. The wires for heating and sensing the print bed are routed underneath the build plate. Now the problem is that the timing belt will touch and rub against these cables as the print bed moves. So this might jam the belt for a short amount of time and the pulley that drives the belt will skip over a couple of teeth and your print will be malformed or even will completely fail. Additionally one day the belt or the heating wires will even snap off and then you have a broken printer. To overcome those issues I rerouted the wires to be external and because I already took that thing apart I've also replaced the crappy plastic pulleys and installed metal ones. So this is not a very easy mod. I'd recommend watching the entire video before you start taking your own printer apart. With that all said, let's dig right in. The first step is to remove the build plate assembly from the rest of the printer. Do that by removing the 8 screws, securing it to the linear rods. There are 4 on the front and 4 on the back side. Then simply snap one of the zip ties that secure the timing belt and pull this one out. Now you can carefully push the build plate upwards until it disconnects from the rods. Pull the timing belt out and lay down the whole assembly. Then flip over your printer and unscrew all screws that hold the button plate. Drilling will obviously create metal chips. We don't want them to later short out or damage any circuit and that's why we need to take out most of the electronic components. It's always a good practice to either mark oil connections or easier just take a couple of pictures with your smartphone so you can later put back everything in the right order. Now let's start disconnecting the build plate. First remove the two pairs of fine gauge wires. One is for the limit switch and one for temperature sensing. Pull them out through the plastic plug. Since you might not be able to pull through the big connector for the heating wires, just remove the plastic plug together with that wire by squeezing it out. Be careful and don't damage it. You can now remove the entire build plate and put it aside for a while. Next up is the removal of the display unit. There are four screws on the top that need to be removed. Take a small screwdriver to bend up the front cover. This is glued with double sided tape so be careful not to break anything. Disconnect and lift up the display unit and then remove all the screws that hold the rotary switch. If you don't want to swap out the stock pulleys you can skip removing them. But don't forget to remove the stepper since this could also get damaged while drilling the hole. Loosen up all stepper screws and grab it underneath to prevent it falling down after the last screw is removed. To complete the disassembly push all the wires through the hole in the display unit so they are out of the way. So sure enough we are now ready for drilling. At the end of the day we need an 11 or even a 12 mm hole. If you do not have a drill press it's better to work your way towards your target diameter by starting with a small drill. I decided to do this in 4 passes by slightly increasing the diameter from time to time. The position of the hole is not too important. Just take the rough middle and start drilling a tiny alignment hole first. Then continue with the next drill until you reach the 11 mm. When you are finished take a file and clean the in and outside edges of the hole. Next, take your build plate and remove the painter's tape or whatever fancy thing you are using. Remove all screws and everything else that holds the heated bed. Be careful to not lose any springs or washers that were attached and be very careful to not damage the solder joints of the wires. Remove everything by squeezing out the rubber plug. There are a couple of designs out there that do not drill a hole into the heat bed slide, but I find it a lot cleaner to do so. So clamp this part into a vise and repeat the drilling process with the same drills you used before. Now the position of the hole is a little bit more important. If you take a look at the surface, you see the two slots for the timing bills. They are a bit off-center. Choose the side with the greater space to the mounting holes. No exact science involved here, but imagine the center line between the slots and the mounting holes and drill it just a little bit closer to the holes. After filing the edges again, the drilling part is finished. Ok, so now let's start putting this thing back together. Take the heat bed assembly and push both plugs through the holes. Then install the last plug in the previously drilled hole. If you take any tool like a screwdriver, make sure you don't damage the plug. And to make things a bit easier, you might want to snap the zip tie that was there by default. Then align both parts and make sure everything looks fine. You might want to pull out or push in the wires a bit until it looks nice and everything's in place. Next, grab a bit of cable sleeve. 
I've salvaged mine from an old desktop ATX power supply, but you should be able to use any one that you have laying around. Take this leaf and try to push through the thick connector with the heating wires. If you have trouble with that, you might have to cut the wires and re-solder them after the assembly is finished. Another trick is to wrap the connector in some sticky tape to kind around the sharp edges. These tend to get caught up in the sleeve. When you have that in place, grab some heat shrinking tube and slip it over. This will prevent the sleeve from falling apart at the end and also kinda supports and protects the wires from wear and tear. Then push the sleeve with its heat shrinking halfway through the plastic plug. Make sure the length of the wires match and are not overstressed. To fasten things up, add two zip ties at the in and outside and really tighten them up. Now this should feel nice and rugged. So now reinstall the bed. Best practice is to first insert the screw, then put on a washer with the flat side upwards. Insert the spring and then add the second washer with the flat side pointing down while screwing in the screw. After reinstalling, the heat bed unit is finished. So now take your printer and do a quick last check if the cable sleeve is long enough. Then continue by installing the second plug. Repeat the process of adding the heat shrinking tube and also add those zip ties as a strain relief. When you're finished, it's a good time to clean up the working space a bit. Turn your printer around and get ready for installing the new pulleys. If you don't want to do that, feel free to skip until the whole unit gets reassembled. So let's now first swap out the driving pulley of the stepper motor. Take your new part and compare it with the old one. Make sure the pitch of the teeth and the overall height is still the same. If it does, you can rip off the stock pulley. This may require some tools and patience, since it is a very tight fit. Once removed, install the new pulley and then install the stepper back where it belongs. Before reinstalling the print bed, you have to insert the two new teethless guide pulleys. Take the original screws to put them back on. You might notice a slight clearance between the screw head and the bearing of the pulley. That's not a problem, that will be automatically leveled once the bed is installed. After that, just put the wires of the limit switch back into the hole. Now, as an optional step, I have taken the opportunity and added some lubrication to the rods. That's always a good idea. Finally, it's time to install a new belt and then put everything back together. Take the old belt as a reference to cut a new one. Make it a bit longer than the old one, because we need that extra bit for the installation. It will be cut off at the end. Then turn around your printer and hold the belt the right way around. Make sure the teeth are actually facing towards the teeth of the pulley. Pull a loop through the slots in the heating bed and secure it with a zip tie. Then simply cut the zip tie and the unneeded piece of the belt. After that, put the belt into the pulleys and pull the assembly over to the front. Create the same loop, but be careful the belt does not slip out of the guide pulleys. Push the heated bed back onto the rods and flip your printer over to the side. Do a last check and make sure everything is working fine. If it does, put on a loose zip tie around the belt. Now apply some tension and only when you are sure that everything is set, tighten it up at the very beginning of the belt. We don't have that much space since we also have to install the tensioning spring. This might require more than one try, so be patient and take your time. When you are ready, get a nose plier and install the spring right after the zip tie. Check if everything is installed properly, you have enough tension on the belt and you can fully move the bed back and forth. 
Now you can cut the unneeded rest of the belt. Secure the heat bed by putting all 8 screws with their washers back in place. Since I had to cut the heating wires, I first have to re-solder them before installing the electronics. If you do it like me and join them via soldering, make sure you create a decent joint. These wires transport a fair amount of current and you don't want to create a bottleneck here. Be sure to apply enough solder and don't forget heat shrinking to avoid any shorts. Then continue by installing the rotary switch, the display and the display frame. When you install the mainboard, come back to your phone and look at the pictures. Don't mess up and connect the steppers or limit switches to the wrong connectors. Once you install the electronics, put the bottom cover back on. Before doing a test print, we have to change a certain parameter in the EEPROM of the printer. We have to do that since we changed the pulley for the stepper motor. It now has 20 in instead of 17 teeth. Then we'll put on some painter's tape, level the bed and finally do a test print. Before putting on a new set of painter's tape, it's helpful to move the print bed up a bit. Then clean the surface of the heating bed with some rubbing alcohol. This will absolutely increase the adhesion of the tape. After that lift up the edges so you can access the screws. Home your printer, heat up the bed and start leveling. Now here's a quick tip, take a sheet of paper and cut down a strip. Now you can hold your allen key in one hand while moving around the sheet of paper with the other. Ok, so now one last step before we can actually print something. Like already said, we have to change the parameter in the EEPROM storage. This parameter is telling the firmware how many steps the stepper has to make until it reaches a full unit. Since our new pulley has a bit more teeth than the old one, we need a different value than with the stock part. There are many calculators for that purpose available online. You could, for example, use the one from Prusa. A link to that is in the video description. If you installed the same pulley than I did, you don't have to calculate on your own, just take my value. So, to set this value, you have to connect your printer, for example, via USB. In a tool like the free Repetier Host, open up the print settings and choose the right USB port. After hitting connect and switching to the print panel, you should be able to send G code. To get all the EEPROM values, type in M501 and hit return. Our value for the y-axis, steps per unit, is by default set to 93. For our new pulley though, this should be set to 80. Change that by sending the command M92 space Y80 and hit return. This value is now set in the current memory of the printer, but if you do a power cycle, it will be reset to 93. To overcome that, we have to permanently store it into the EEPROM. By typing M500, all the values are getting stored. Now clear the output log and send M501 again. Sure enough, we now have the correct value in our log. A quick test with a 10mm calibration cube proves that our value is correct. So I hope you had fun watching this video. If you get stuck at any point, feel free to ask anything in the comments below. Links to all parts, software and STL files I've used are located in the video description. So stay tuned for more electronics and engineering projects, have fun and happy printing.